Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hip Island Video Diaries. This is episode 3 of 2021. My name is Hannah and I'm recording this video mostly about knitting, hand dyeing and other wool and fibre related things from Northern Tasmania in Australia. I live here with my husband and our two daughters and I love knitting and dyeing yarn and this is my opportunity to have some time to sit down and talk about those things that I really enjoy and I love to share them with you and if you have joined me here thank you so much for taking some of your time to catch up with me hopefully I'll be able to inspire you or in some way um, share with you things that you will find helpful or interesting Okay, so I wasn't going to record today. I I have been quite busy. I have been busy with my um, part-time out of the home work. I have been busy with my hand dyeing business and, you know, just busy with normal things with kids and the home and, and everything like that. And um, I still feel like I am, you know, climbing a hill to get to the point where um, things get a bit easier and it's downhill and I have completed a lot of things that I need to do. But I decided that I just, I can't wait any longer. I need a break. I need a cup of tea. I need to sit down and relax and talk about... Um, things that I, I enjoy and share them with you. So I decided I have about an hour until I have to go and do school pickup. So I'm going to spend that hour with you talking about things that I love. I don't want to go on too much about other things than just basically knitting and yarn. But just quickly, I guess, things are busy really busy and up until last week I was working two days a week in a lab that has now finished and although it's not great I don't have that job or income anymore I just felt so relieved that I would have all my days at home to catch up with all the work that I have um, to do. I think I mentioned in my last video that I've started part-time studies this year to get a certificate in bookkeeping and accounting. So um, I had not been able to start that until this week because I've just been busy doing other things. And I have been dying up a storm and not much that I can actually show you. And I will probably talk more about it at the end of this video if I get a chance. Um, Yes, so busy, busy, but I really needed this time to sit down and, um, yes, do this, this video because doing these recordings is, you know, one of my favourite things and it's me time and it's something I do just for me and I hope that I will be able to um, inspire you or share something with you that you find interesting or helpful. So that's that's what we'll do. So yes, tea, and I have knitting to share with you. First, I'd like to just comment on um, a couple of things. I guess I had a um, a message or a comment on my last video on YouTube, and. Um, it was related to um, something I, I spoke about with my knitting and I had some gauge issues and um, I'll, maybe I'll talk more about it when I show the project that I was talking about then. But I've also had comments in the past um, about the actual, uh, not the content of my videos, but maybe a little bit of, of what I share and how I share and 
I just wanted to to say that I am, although I have a lot of experience, I'm not an expert, and I don't record these videos as a way of, um, you know, directly educate or show you how things work. Um, it's more just for me just sharing with you what I do and maybe, you know, it's just inspiration really for anyone who's interested. And um, if there's, you know, someone watching who is looking for more tutorials, how to do things and want to know, Know, like the correct way of doing things which I don't know is actually a thing but if if that's more what you're after there's so many great tutorials so much great information on YouTube in different videos and I just want to say that don't um don't expect this to be a lesson in knitting basically um, I'm so so happy with all the comments and messages that I get and you know it was great that someone highlighted this uh, thing that I mentioned last time and um, because it's important to me that I actually get to think about those things and think about how people that watch my videos how they um, You know what they how they found find what I I say, and that it's not always straightforward and logical to everyone because we all have a different um, you know different backgrounds, different situations, and yeah. So, but I just wanted to say that that it's not a video about how to knit, and I'm not an expert, um, but you can find plenty of information through other sources. This is just something that's for fun, inspiration, and really, it's my time to just talk about these things that I love, to share them with you. So, let's start talking about some stuff that I've been up to, some knitting. Oh, what am I wearing? I was going to forget that. This is my... Um, Yarn from the 2019 advent calendar that, that I did. It was a tea themed yarn advent calendar. And this was the 100 gram skein called a Special Blend. And it is um, has yellow, purpley pink and green and with all oh, gray over glazed <laughs> um and the pattern that i did was um heavily modified magnolia by camilla bod so circular yoke construction and i just adjusted it to fit my body i guess <laughs> i love this uh, both the, the colour, it's fun, but it's sort of neutral, and also um, the fit, and it's just a fingering weight, so it's a great, um, great fabric for wearing, and yes, I wear it a lot, and I actually thought that I had lost it a couple of weeks ago, all of a sudden I thought, where's my special blend jumper? When did I last wear it? I couldn't see it in my wardrobe and I have quite a few woolen jumpers and they're all on a shelf, maybe like this height, a bit higher than, uh, I don't know, my head. <laughs> so I can't see very well behind all the jumpers or, you know, up, or up at the top. I couldn't find it and I started going through, still couldn't find it, had to go somewhere and do something and then the next day I went back and thank goodness I found it behind some other jumpers. So yes, I'm happy um, that I had not lost it 
somewhere where I couldn't get it back again. Okay, I have finished something. Something that I spoke about last time. And this was um, also what I had a comment on that I might just explore a bit further. These are the little pieces of yarn that I have left of my main colours of my Cherry Chevron shawl. Cherry Chevron is a shawl by Amber O'Brien. And I have completed this. I was close to completing it last time and I did tell you that I was running out of yarn and uh, wasn't going to make it. And now I completed it with a um, completely different colorway. The yarn I'm using is my Merino Linen uh, Single Base. And I have used Vintage Lays and Sky. And then I added the Pinot colorway. It's quite a large shawl. And now to the, the comment I had, because I was saying, and I don't think it was only with this um, shawl, it was also about a jumper that I was wearing, that I, I have problems with getting the right gauge. And with this one, I was running out of yarn. And I didn't mean to... Um, make people not want to make this shawl because they might risk running out of yarn. Something that I do and I feel comfortable with doing it and I you know I accept consequences I guess is that I often decide what needles engage that I want based on the fabric that I like. So with this shawl, I did not do a swatch because I was happy with the fabric that I got with the needles that I used. And being a dyer and it was my own yarn, I didn't have to worry about running out of yarn. I could, I mean, now I used a, a different colorway, but I could have dyed up more of what I was using. So I'm lucky in the way that I don't have to worry about running out of yarn, really. And I was happy with the fabric that I got using these needles and I was happy with how I felt knitting it. And that's that's what I prioritise and I take the consequences from, from that. So if I had actually got the correct gauge, um, I might not have run out of yarn. Another thing is, I, I'm not sure what Amber uses for her original shawl what stated in the pattern but the merino linen base is only 360 meters per 100 grams so it's not the 400 that is sort of the um, standard sock yarn weight so that might also have um, contributed to that I ran out of yarn so I just wanted to to, to say that because I didn't want it to, I didn't want anyone to think that I was running out of yarn because of how the pattern was written. I just decided to do things a bit differently and I I, I realised the risk with doing, doing it the way that I did it. Um, but this is the Sherry Chevron Shawl and I am super, super happy with it and have you noticed? I have even woven in all the ends, which is just amazing. Normally, I would just sit just in a pile once it was finished and I had shown it on, on my video and just leave it there until either I need a present <laughs> for someone or I just really want to wear it. And um, I have realized, I mean, I think I knew that I really am a process knitter. For me, it's all about the process of knitting. It's all about the journey. 
not so much about the finished product. I realised this, or I had it proven to myself last night, actually. So the pile that this normally would end up in is a big bag that I have with all my finished projects that still need to have their ends woven in. Lots of socks. I think all of my free socks 2020 are in that bag. And um, I'd woven in the ends on this. And I thought, well, it's quite good to have, have a project that needs um, the ends woven in sitting you know, sitting around in the kitchen or somewhere and I can just do a little bit of time and I thought I really should, I should tackle all those things in that bag. So I got a pair of shorter socks out and these were a pair of socks that I made for the Strictly Sock Along, that little drops of wonderful hosts when they do the Strictly Dancing season in the UK. And the first year she did it was 2018. I think that that was the first year she had a, a knit along. For everyone um, she might have done it herself previous years but for 2018 season of strictly dancing she did this knit along and i joined in and i made this pair of sparkly shorty socks 2018 i think towards the end of 2018 and those socks were sitting in the bag and i thought oh really should fix those ends so I can actually wear the socks and I got them out had them ready turned them inside out and I thought the ends are already woven in there must be an end that's not woven in no they're all woven in turn the other one inside out same thing they were all woven in the only thing was I had not cut off the ends I have no memory of when I did this. But that really proves to me that I'm more about the knitting than having the finished item. Who knows how long those socks have been sitting there ready to be worn. And who knows how long they would still be in my pile of weaving in ends to do. <laughs> um, if I just had not, you know, had a, a whim of, oh, let's let's get something out of that bag to complete. So today I'm wearing those socks and I am so happy with them. So that was really easy <laughs> to finish. But yes, more about the knitting than what I create, I guess. Well, I want what I create to be something beautiful and well-fitting. But especially with socks, I don't really have a great need for more socks. Although I must say that um, I have ha I have found a few pairs of socks now that are quite worn in the heel and toe area, and oh, I put a pile to the side. I was going to reinforce and mend and fix, and now I'm thinking maybe I should just put that time into weaving in the ends on the socks that I have already finished knitting, but not yet worn and the other ones maybe it's time for them to go anyway all of that um just as a sidetrack from i finished my sherry chevron and it's 100 percent complete except i have not blocked it um i think it's great and i think this pop of, of color here on the end is quite fun i have to um I like wearing it in a way so you can sort of see the transition a little bit. Sherry Chevron. Mm. Super cosy. And it might be going to Bendigo with me in July. It was in Bendigo that I first saw this pattern knit up. Um, and I just really loved, liked it and I went home and purchased the pattern and then last year I knitted. Yeah. So that's something I finally, finally finished. And now I think I might wait a bit until I do a shawl again. <laughs>
Um, I have so many shawls. And then I have actually finished something that I had not even started last time. And I had, I think I did this last week. So I have been dyeing a lot, as I said, and I have quite a few new colorways. I'm a bit silly that way, that when I have an event or something special to dye up yarn for, I just go crazy and just create a whole new collection and a whole new set of colorways instead of going with things that I already have developed recipes for. Anyway, I have been working on quite a few new colorways and some of them I will introduce to the web shop eventually. But I wanted uh, to make a sample and I thought, what? These are all mostly sock yarn, my delicious sock yarn. And I thought, oh, I could do socks or fingerless mitts or beanie or something. And I thought, oh, I just want to do something different. This is my opportunity. I could do anything because it's a sample. And I thought, baby knits. Baby knits is not something that I ever get an opportunity to do because I don't have any babies in my you know, surrounding that needs hand knits. So I thought, I'm going to make a little baby jumper and use a few different colorways. And this is what I made. This is um, based on flax by Tin Can Knits, the flax light. This is a fingering weight yarn. And I just adjusted it to the gauge that I got. I made it short sleeve because it is a sample and I thought I can do what I want and I needed to have it done. So I made it short sleeve. So it's like a little vest. And there are the new colorways there and I thought they were quite fun. Fun together. So that's something. That I made. So I think most of these four colorways I'll, I'll have stenciled in my shop eventually. But this is going off to be a sample. Let my send off some yarn. So that's that one. So that was very fun. To make and quick, very quick. It smells nice, it's blocked. Blocks are nice. And there are the things that I have finished. I am working on a few things, not a whole lot. Oh, look, I've even forgotten to write something down. I don't have anything new. Oh, yes, I do, uh, sort of. Anyway, so I'm working on still my Helga hat by Rachel Sergard. It's a free pattern by um, Phil Kalan, I think, the yarn brand, but the designer is um, Rachel Sergard. And I have just started the decreases at the crown. I've shown this a few times. This is my yarn from Scan Yarn in her El Marino sock base and April Skies colorway. And I have a little ooh, pom pom to put at the top. At the top. I modified the pattern a little bit by doing a, a folded brim, so it's it's nice and thick. It's not going to be slouchy like the pattern um, has it written up to be. I didn't really want it slouchy. Um, and it is, it's not super tight, but it's going to be quite fitted. And I think, if anything, with Superwash Merino and the ribbing, it's all a rib texture pattern, but it's all ribbed. Um, with that, I think it might stretch a bit and grow. 
and a lot of my beanies that I wear that I made a few years ago and I mostly wear beanies when we go up um to the snow we have a, a tiny little ski resort in a nature reserve is that what's called national park <laughs> about an hour from from here where we go in in winter and that's where I wear any of my beanies and with the snow and the wet and most of them being super washed they just they've just stretched a lot of them a lot of them have stretched so I thought I'll do this a little bit tighter and hopefully it will um, sort of keep a good size for longer so that's my Helga it's called Helga I'm starting to doubt that I think so so that's it there So I've been working a little bit on that. I haven't really been working a lot on it. I've just sort of picked it up again to actually complete it now, I think. That's that one. And then the two main things that I have been working on, but only a little bit from each, are my two colour work jumpers. First up, I'll show you the Soldotna. Sobdotna by Caitlin Hunter, Boiler Knitworks, which I am knitting in Holzgarn Coast and Spinning Yarn Weaving Tales Coastal. Showing you the back, I think. No? So last time I think I had completed the body and I was thinking about what to do with the sleeves. And I left my, my um, yarn the waist yarn where I had all my sleeve stitches, I kept that in, where I left that in and started actually knitting the sleeve. And I thought, if I'm not happy with how it looks, I can always just rip it back to there and do the short sleeve as per the pattern. But I um, actually made a sleeve. And because I, I have a limited amount of yarn in, in this turquoise, I weighed it and one when I got to half the weight I completed the sleeve and hopefully I did my measurements right and now I've just picked up the stitches on the other sleeve and I will do the same and hopefully um, yes the calculations were right and I have enough to make the same length and this is just below elbow length but I do think I don't think it will look too crazy with all this patterning, but I do think that a longer sleeve will be more useful for me. Although I have I think I have two or three tees that I knitted. And I have actually been wearing them more than I, I expected I would. So yes, I'm not I think there's uses for the short sleeve tees, but I decided to try a bit of a longer sleeve on this one because I had the yarn to do it. So that's the Soldotna, and I've been doing that magic loop. And it's it's not hard, but I'm doing because I'm doing the coastal, which is the light fingering, I am doubling the yarn. And you might be able to imagine doing it on this, you know, short um, round and three colours. I mean, only ever two colours at a time, but there's still a lot of yarn management. <laughs> and yes, high risk of tangling. But it is quite, it works up quite quickly. So it is okay. It's okay. I did it on Magic Loop, which worked okay. But then, moving on to the next one I'm working on, which is Ghost Horses, also by Caitlin Hunter. This one I am making out of my own hand-dyed yarn and the same base that I did my Sherry Chevron shawl, the Merino Linen. I have this inside out now. I don't think I can change it. 
this one. I decided first I thought should I try to keep it to just using one skein of each colour. It's hard to show you this inside out. There's two colours. It's my chocolate colourway and my lamington crayfish. And yes, I have decided to skein up another couple of of um, cakes out of that yarn. I have this much left out of my original skeins. And I could, if I made it cropped and short sleeved, make it work, no problem. But I thought, really? It's so easy for me to grab another couple of skeins and make it a jumper that I can wear through winter. And yes, I'll just, and I thought maybe the Sildotna would be short sleeved. I thought I'll make one short sleeve and one long sleeve, but in the end, they're both going to have longer sleeves. Uh, this one is a little bit, I have, yes, mm, a bit of a mess, needles everywhere. I worked a body. And I got to a, a point where I felt like the, the length was okay. But the sleeves, let's see if I can show you, the sleeves go you know, quite open. And I felt like the point here was quite low down. And I wasn't sure that when I actually put the sleeve in, if that would mean that the body would go up a bit which would make it feel shorter. Yeah, so I felt like I actually have to put the sleeves in first to f see how it actually sits on my body and what the length will, length will be. So I have stopped the body and left needles in. And I picked up for my first sleeve and started knitting on that. And with this one, I decided to do the 30 centimeter or I think 12 inch circular needle um, because this one only has the two colors and it's only one strand of each so it's much much easier not a problem with tangling or anything like that Um I left the waist yarn in again because I wasn't sure how it's going to work because my issue here or what I think is a risk is that when I knit on this small uh, circular needle that I my the floats at the back and it's only very short floats on this it's the perfect pattern for color work it's so easy only short floats um but I think that because I can't I don't stretch the fabric out very much when I'm knitting um they might get a bit tight so I'm trying to knit quite loosely um, and we'll see. So I'll, I'll do that a bit and then I'll, I'll transfer over to a longer needle and try it on, partly to see if it gets, if it's too tight and also to see how adding the sleeve will affect the length of the body. That makes sense. So this one, yes, it's sort of going every direction and it's inside out and yes, very, very hard to show you at the moment, but that's also happening. And um, I'm not, mm, mm, yes, I don't know. Sometimes it's just sort of getting to that step of having started the sleeve that needs to be done for it to then move forward. So I've done that on this now, so I might complete my soldotna and then work on this. Eventually they will both get done. Eventually. <laughs> Perfect for um, no, winter. I'm wearing them then and maybe even a Bendigo in July. We'll see. So yes, that's mainly what I've been, been working on. Last time I had some dream knitting I talked about or things that I wanted to cast on. Let's see, let's see. Where do I have it? 
I had this new yarn that I bought in a D stash. It's a Gotland wool. I have three other colors here. I have a black as well, and I have this gray. I have quite a few skeins of the gray. And I had found the pattern that I wanted to make, which is 50. This one, which came in this Swedish knitting magazine. You can get this um, design as a child's um, jumper, children's jumper on Ravelry. It's by Vedis Jonsdottir and Johanna Hjaltadottir. Ifki, it's called. Uh, I think it's only by one of them when it's the kids version. Um, so I wanted to do this and I did cast on. <laughs> I did cake up my yarn and I did cast it on. I don't have much to show you. Um, yes, it was something I just, I treated myself to casting this on one evening when I felt like I needed something special for me. And then I stopped because I wasn't sure about the size and I thought I, I should measure this against some other jumper. It felt a little bit big. And I still haven't got around to measuring it, measuring it around royal against another jumper. Also, I had some problem with some weaker points in the yarn that I didn't discover until I had been knitting a bit. So I actually had to drop down stitches and then try to um, felt some yarn pieces together that I felt were um, sort of unraveling a bit. So then I thought, you know, maybe I should just start over so I don't have that weak point because it might get undone again and now I don't know where it is. So that just sort of paused. And then I thought maybe I should just complete the jumpers I'm already working on. Not sure. It is going to happen though. First up, I should measure against another jumper and see what the size is like. But that's what's happening with that one. And I probably probably did that like two weeks ago and I haven't touched it since. So that's things that I have been knitting on, working on. And of course, I have been doing some dream knitting as well. I have some things that I would really like to um, make at some point, or at least things that I have been very tempted and I've been um, looking at and, you know, looking at the different projects on Ravelry and things like that. And, um, one of the patterns that I would really like to make, and I have been for a little while, um, is a jumper called Fosvein by Inga Semmingsen. Uh, in, I'll insert a, a photo, hopefully. Um, and it is a beautiful colourwork jumper, and it also has some cabling. And I just, I think it's really, really beautiful. And I've favorited ages ago and I've been thinking about it, but I've I've started being a bit more not careful. But with buying patterns, I try to not buy them until I'm actually going to cast on a knit. So that's for Svein is Yes, that's, I really want to make it. And I've been really close to buying the pattern, but I'm telling myself I can buy it when I'm actually going to use it. So that's one dream knitting I've been doing. The other one is a new release, and it's a knitted tee, and it's made by a designer who has a knitting podcast in Swedish together with a friend. And the tea is called Anna Tea, and the designer is called Sava Stark. And it's I've I've seen her knitting on this on her podcast, and 
sort of followed the journey of her designing it. And it's neat in the same base as this, the merino linen. Um, there's a couple of, at least a couple of Swedish indie dyes that has that have that base they dye on. And for this design, that's one of the suggested yarns. And when I saw Sarah first make it, um, I thought it was just really nice. And I like the idea of using two skeins of this yarn to make a garment. So that's something that I am, I've also been um, dream knitting and, and looking at and thinking about colorways. And um, yes, I might wait a bit with it though because we're going into the cold season. But if now that I've, I'm still working with that yarn base on my ghost horses sweater, so I have that. But if when that's finished and I will just I have some skeins of that yarn that I really would like to use for something. I think that tea would probably be what I would make. The pattern is only available in Swedish at the moment, but in April it will also have a um, an English version. So that's Anna Tea by Sara Stark. And that's um, what I have been knitting, what I am knitting, and what I would like to knit. <laughs> Um, so the, the dyeing and my hand dyeing business, Rosip Island, it's all, all happening. It's all happening um, behind the scenes. I have been quite busy uh, because I have my tea and yarn club and I release some pre-orders for Easter yarn. I have a wholesale order and I have another order or event coming up that I've been dying for so I wanted to get all those things done and on the side I have been dying a little bit for my web shop but I want to get the other things um, totally completed done and shipped off before I um, focus more on my web shop and adding more things in there I just sent off well last week uh, last week of February I sent off the February shipment of my tea and yarn club if you don't want to see what the club was in February then skip forward a few minutes the February shipment was the fairy garden tea party Every month has a tea party theme. So it was the fairy garden tea party and there's a full 100 gram skein and two 20 gram minis on my delicious sock yarn. And the 100 gram skein was the fairy queen. I think that's what I called it. I didn't write it down. I should have. Which is a tonal purple. And with this came two minis. One of them morning dew i think that's what i called it it's blown out a bit so it's a cream with brown and fluorescent green speckles and then a second mini viola so that's a variegated purple green greens and some peach so yes I thought they were quite fun together I'm so pleased with how this turned out so that was the February shipment of the club and next up is uh, March which is the Mad Mad Hatter tea party which will be crazy and fun so that's something that I'll be um, dying up very shortly i'm still waiting for some more um yarn to arrive some mini skeins um 
once I have those, I'll be dialing up for the third shipment. And um, since I don't really have any other, any other dyeing to show you, I, ha I have so much dyed yarn around me, but um, it's all a, a mix about mix of what I can show you and what I can't show you and go in different places. So I won't show any um, any of the yarn. But um, I might talk a little bit about the club and future plans. I have had a lot of questions about the Tea and Yarn Club and I've had people wanting to join in um, after we got started and questions about um, upcoming clubs and I definitely want to do more clubs. Doing pre-orders works really well for me and just how, how I work and how I can plan things because I have to plan my dying around a few things and yes obviously knowing that what you dye is already sold makes much more sense than dyeing things and not knowing if or when they will be sold. So it is working really well for me. So definitely I want to do more clubs and um, I think because I did the tea and yarn club and a lot of people have, have found it after we started, I want to give um, those people the opportunity to also do a tea and yarn club. So it's not something that I will keep that I will keep doing for forever. <laughs> um, I might have to change my my theme a bit, but uh, yes, I want to do another tea and yarn club. I was thinking about doing it monthly instead of three months, but the reason that I, I got people to sign up for um, a longer period of time is that because I do visual extras and the tea and things, I need a bit of time to get those things together and to have, you know, to order things and have them shipped to me and everything like that. So if I do it month by month, I'm not sure that I would have enough advance notice unless I do the pre-orders, you know, quite a few weeks before the actual shipment. Um, any suggestions um, about clubs and you know if you want to let me know what you know your experience with clubs and what you prefer and how you like it uh, and what you don't like please please let me know because I am trying to make things work not only for me but also for anyone who's interested in a club um, but yes there will be a tea and yarn club probably another three months I have to think about a theme and plan what extras to put in there I think doing the full skein and two mini skeins and an extra and a tea worked quite well um again if you have any comments on that <laughs> please let me know um what I have been thinking is that I might have a break in April because it's going to be Easter and school holidays and after doing three months of the club having that month off would probably be quite good <laughs> and um, yes I because I am also now studying and I'm already behind yes I think a month having the month of April off doing the club could work quite well and it will also give me more time um, to get things together for the shipments and will give well probably leave a longer time for pre-orders to uh, anyway um, it is happening I am planning for it I have so many plans, so many ideas in my head, but I just do not have, I haven't had the time to actually make things reality, which 
I'm trying to not stress about, but I see other dyers and makers just popping up, popping out these new amazing ideas and things that they're doing and I just trying to keep up with them doing so you know I have to realize my limitations with you know everything else that I have in my life um and you know having your own business the, the best thing is you know with it is that you can um molded around how you know how your life is and how you like your life to look and the balance you would ideally have um in your life so that's that's what i'm trying to focus on and not focus so much on what everyone else is doing <laughs> maybe not the best business strategy but um definitely a good life strategy i think okay so yes clubs will be coming and any ideas suggestions comments very very welcome i would love to know what you would like to see i think that's where i will finish off today um thank you so much for joining me I hope you have seen something or found out about something new or, you know, something that inspired you a little bit. So, who knows when I'll be recording next time. Maybe when I finally have some new yarn available for the webshop. We'll see. Anyway, thank you for joining me again and i will hopefully see you next time so until then take care bye